Hey downtimers, today we're going to finish up our palisade pieces and the first thing we need to do is mark down from the very top of the palisade to about a quarter inch down and just draw a line straight across and we're going to use a scroll saw to make our cuts so you notice I'm just cutting straight down the lines that represent the separation of the logs in the palisade and of course we're just going to go straight down and you can go down and then go ahead and start making your spikes but the way i usually do it is I, I go down all the way to the very end and then i go back and i cut diagonals to make spikes and of course you can use different saws to do this i just found the uh the scroll saw is a lot easier and a, a lot faster than using uh, other types of saws that you could use for this it's obviously going to be a lot more versatile i think and you can also make curved cuts with the scroll saw so if you have a scroll saw it works great you'll find this to be very easy and efficient and if you don't have a scroll saw and you enjoy working with wood i highly advise you to go ahead and get one you can get one as cheap as about 80 bucks at walmart for a two-speed scroll saw you might find a relative or a friend that'll just let you borrow one just to see how you like them but they're very versatile and you can just do all sorts of things with them and really easy to learn, easy to work with. As with all saws, you can certainly hurt yourself with this and you want to be sure to practice all the safety precautions you should. Make sure your fingers are out of the way of the blade, but it is a great tool for the woodworker, especially the woodworker who enjoys crafting miniature terrain. Now I'm going to use my Black & Decker palm sander to sand this down a bit. And you notice I also used the sander to get rid of the little uh, quarter inch mark that I had before. And usually these are pretty easy to sand up. If you have problems getting in between the spikes, you can always use just a separate piece of sandpaper and your fingers to get in between those spikes. Now we're going to use a straight edge. If you're like me and you misplace your T that you normally use for this step, uh, you will need to just use a straight edge and go <laughs> from one mark on one side to the other. Typically, they're going to be measured out about the same. You can just eyeball this. It's not a huge deal if it's not perfect. You can see here I'm using the straight edge to mark these lines again to make them a little bit darker. You want these lines to be pretty dark anyway because you're actually going to burn these lines later on so you won't be erasing these. Also, one thing I really like about the, these Palisade pieces is the fact that it's not critical if you're off a little bit or if the line's a little bit wavy or not perfectly straight or not at 90 degrees or whatever. That's part of the reason why I like these so much. It's not like working on a castle wall. I think with castle walls, you're a little more limited. I think you have to be pretty much right on uh, most of the time anyway, but when you're dealing with something like this, it's a it's almost kind of crude, you know, these log pieces thrown together as, as a quick fortification around a city or something like that. Um, I think a little bit off actually makes it look better. Part of my attraction to the woodworking and, and miniature terrain a lot of times is things like this where things don't have to be perfect and actually it gives it a little bit of character when it's not. So just keep that in mind while you're working with these pieces. You'll see here I'm actually using my wood burner now. We're up to the wood burning step. And it's very similar to making your base blocks, except we have these spikes to deal with. And you can see the method I'm using for those. And I also use a lot of the same techniques as far as marking the, the grain of the wood, making a little more some more grain marks and so forth. One thing that's pretty cool about these palisade pieces is the fact that we know how they're going to sit on the table. Unlike with the base blocks, we're not always sure because the base blocks can be used in so many different ways and, and for so many different things. For the palisade pieces, they pretty much are just going to be used for one thing. And so because of that, we know how we can put the little accent marks. If we're going to put some battle damage on these and we want to show smoke damage, we obviously would have the smoke damage going up in the direction of the spikes. If we're going to have maybe they're made out of pine, we want to show some pine sap running down a log obviously it would go down right so we already know how to set the accent marks and in in which way they should be going unlike with the base blocks you don't really know with these you do so it really adds a lot more i think it gives you a lot more information and so that you know 
how to put those little accents and little touches to the piece that can make it even more interesting. Now, after we're done with all of our little accent touches with the wood burner, we're going to get out our paint and I'm going to use apple barrel nutmeg, uh, the same as I always use with these. And you'll notice a lot of times I will paint one log, go all the way up to the tip, paint the tip, and then go towards the back on the walkway side and paint that very same log, the same shade. And the reason being is because I'm, I don't know why, I'm just pretty particular about that. I like for each log to look totally independent of the one next to it to create that illusion that each of these is standing on its own and this piece is made up of individual logs, right? And as I mentioned before, I like to use a wash for this because I like for the wood grain to actually show through the paint. So I'll use different shades. One shade of the paint will be darker than the log next to it. The log next to it, I might have more water and less paint on the brush. And just to carry out that illusion that each log is independent, but it, it's always a wash. So, but also the reason why is because what better way to show the grain than to simply let the wood grain show on its own. So instead of like when we work with other materials, we have to use various techniques in order to create grain. When you work with wood to show wood on the table, it already has grain. So just allow the grain to show through. You don't have to worry about creating it. You have to learn to, to lighten the, the tone of the paint so that the natural wood shows through. And it always looks better, in my opinion, than anything that we could possibly do uh, to try to artificially create grain. This piece is done now, so I'll set it in a room with a dehumidifier and a fan with the other pieces for about 20 minutes or so, and then they'll be ready for the table. So that's it for the Palisade piece. If you guys would, please give us a like if you got anything out of this. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.